Whether you're installing one door or 10 doors, there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way. What's up guys, it's Clayton, the Weekend Builder. Today we're hanging some doors. Whether you're replacing a door or hanging a door for the first time, the process is the same. There's only three things you need to worry about to have a good, solid door. Those three things are the fit, the fastening, and the trim. So starting with the fit, you have to make sure that you're ordering the proper door. So measure your rough opening first. Doors come in increments of every two inches, and you can buy these straight off the rack at Home Depot pre-hung. A pre-hung door simply means that it's already on the hinges and attached to the door frame. So all you have to do is slide that door frame into the rough opening opening and secure it down. The second thing is fastening or securing the door. You have two options with this. You can use nails or you can use screws. If you have a 16 gauge finish nailer, I recommend you use nails because it's going to be super easy and you can get a finish nailer at Harbor Freight for like 30 bucks if you have an air compressor. But if you don't have a finish nailer and you don't want to go buy one, then I'd recommend getting finish screws. Finish screws have a smaller head on them and so they're going to be a lot more low profile once you've installed them. Moving on, we have the trim. If you're installing a pre-hung interior door, this is going to come with the trim for both sides. The same can't be said about a exterior doors, those often only come with brick mold on the outside and that's so that you can match the trim to the other trim in your house. Your rough opening should be about a half inch larger than the door that you're installing. That's going to allow you to have some wiggle room to make sure that your door is nice and plumb and level before you fasten it down. I don't know what happened, but I must have mismeasured when I framed this basement and a couple of these rough openings were an inch wider than they should be, but it was an easy fix. I just ripped a couple strips of half inch MDF and I nailed those to the sides. Once that was taken care of, I could then set the door in place. After that, I used shims to make sure that the door was plumb and level. Then we used a 16 gauge brad nailer to secure the door in place. Now there are two parts to an interior door. One has a tongue and one has a groove. And you basically just sandwich the wall between those two halves and then you fasten it. So now I'm on the other side of the door and I'm sliding the tongue on this piece into the groove of the one that we just nailed down. Then using two and a half inch finish nails, we're gonna secure this in place. About halfway through installing the doors, I stumbled upon an unexpected but sweet victory. Just watch this clip. I was right above you. Oh, I didn't hear a thing. Did you hear the toilet flush? No. Really? No. Nice! nice. <laughs> if you've seen my soundproofing video, you know that I've spent about $3,000 on soundproofing this basement apartment. This being the first time I was able to hear the difference because of the soundproofing was a classic victory. In last week's video, I went through all of the soundproofing methods that I used in the basement apartment. So if that's interesting to you, stick around and I'll link to that at the end of the video. So in total, I installed six doors in this apartment, five interior and one exterior. And the hardest one to hang is always the first. After that, we just got quicker and quicker. Something worth mentioning is that you also want to nail inside the door jam, not just the trim around it. I realize now that the earlier clip didn't show that, but make sure that you're nailing on the inside too. And the last door to install was this exterior door that led to my wood shop. I'm not gonna be using nails for this. I actually used three inch construction screws. We're putting in three on each side and then one in the center of the top. Now with all of the doors installed, I moved on to trimming out the exterior doors. As you know, soundproofing is a really big factor for me, so I used spray foam all around the door to make sure that there were no air gaps. So I used a utility knife to cut that foam away, then I used a multi-tool to cut the shims even with the door. If this video wasn't terrible so far, please tap the like button. That tells YouTube that this video is helpful and will then show it to more people. And in turn, that will help others find answers to the same questions that you came here with. As if the soundproofing measures I took hadn't complicated things enough already, this wall has two layers of 5 8 drywall, so it's sticking out about 3 quarters of an inch past the door jam. To remedy this, I tacked on some quarter round so that it was even with the drywall. Then I grabbed some more trim from Home Depot that matched my existing door trim. Now I'm no finished carpenter, but if I were to give one piece of advice when adding door trim, that would be to not use your tape measure. I'll cut my pieces a half inch longer than they need to be, then I'll set them in place and use referential measurement to get an exact fit. Then I'll bring that back to the saw, cut it, and it will fit perfectly. After the wood shop door was completed, I did the exact same steps to the front door. Then I also trimmed out around the window on the inside of the sill because my windows are actually wrapped and that means that the window has drywall in the sill and the sides as opposed to trim. 
hanging doors is really not that difficult. In fact, all you need is a couple of tools and an hour or two. If you're curious, all of the tools that I use today will be linked in the description. This is the fourth video in my basement renovation series. So if you wanna see how I turned this unfinished space into this basement apartment, tap the subscribe button down below. It just means that when I publish my next basement renovation video, you're gonna see it. And I publish videos every hump day. You know what hump day is, don't make me explain it. And a quick thank you to my father-in-law who came and helped me hang these doors. If you wanna know the best way to soundproof walls or ceilings, go ahead and click on this video right here. And if you want to know the best way to do custom built-ins, watch this one. Unless you're watching this video within the first week of me posting it, in which case it's not even up.